Okay, for our next question, that is question number 32. We have to state the rule used to find the force acting on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. And we know that it's a Fleming's left hand rule. So Fleming's left hand rule is used to find the direction of force acting on a conductor placed in a magnetic field and we have to state that so let's write down the Fleming's left hand rule so this is Fleming's left hand rule now what does it states it states that if we stretch the four finger central finger so If we stretch the four finger the central finger and the thumb of your left hand. Oh. Of a left hand mutually perpendicular to each other. Now, such that, so you have to stretch the forefinger, the forefinger, the central finger, and the thumb of a left hand mutually perpendicular to each other, such that now if. <laughs> That means if your forefinger gives the direction of magnetic field. Shows the direction of magnetic field and central finger shows the direction of current. Okay, now then the direction in which the thumb points gives the direction of force. Then the direction of force or motion of conductor. is given by the direction of thumb is given in which the thumb points or is given by the direction of thumb okay so that means that let this be the forefinger let these be the forefinger the central finger and the thumb so this we the four finger which gives the direction of the magnetic field is ordered by B and this be the central finger of the left hand which gives the direction of the current then this thumb in which the direction with the thumb gives the direction of the force so this is the Fleming's left hand rule okay now let's move on to Okay, for second question, given below are three diagrams showing entry of an electron in a magnetic field, we have to identify the case in which the force will be maximum and minimum and give reason for your answer. So in this case, the electron is entering perpendicular. So the direction of electron, so the direction of electron is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So this is the direction of electron, then this is the direction of the current. Direction of the current is taken opposite to the direction of the electron. So that means that current and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other so in first case the force will be maximum because the current and the magnetic field these are mutually perpendicular to each other so these are mutually perpendicular to each other we will write that in the first case current that is i and a magnetic field which is noted by b they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So direction of current is always taken opposite to direction of flow of electrons. 
and they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So here the so mutually perpendicular to each other means that the force in this case is minimum. The fo sorry, force will be maximum. So force here will be maximum. So this is maximum. Okay. <clears throat> so we have to give choose only the maximum and the minimum uh, force and so first case the force is maximum because the current and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other okay in this case the electron is moving in this direction so this is the direction of the current and the magnetic field is in the is is in this direction so for the third one they are parallel to each other the force on an electron is minimum because the electron is moving along but parallel to the direction of the magnetic field so here so for the first figure the this is uh, second part so for the second part in first figure that is in figure one the current and magnetic field are mutually perpendicular to each other the force will be maximum now in the figure three the current and the magnetic field field b are moving parallel to each other so electron and magnetic field are moving parallel to each other so that means the angle between them is zero so that means the force will be minimum here so these are the only cases this is the figure third so for figure third the electron and the magnetic field are moving parallel to each other so here the force is minimum here you will have some finite force because the electron is entering at some angle to the magnetic field but we have to identify the case in which the force will be maximum and minimum so this is the maximum and this is the minimum case and here you will have some uh, finite force that is you will have some get some value of the force acting on the uh, conductor because the electron is moving at certain angle with the magnetic field so let's move on to the b part we have to draw the pattern of magnetic field lines of a current carrying solenoid and a bar magnet and list two distinguished features between the two fields so this is the part b and we know that what is a solenoid so solenoid is uh, insulated copper wire wrapped closely in the form of a cylinder so let's first of all draw the pattern of magnetic fields around the current carrying solenoid so solenoid is a current carrying insulated copper wire wrapped closely in the form of a cylinder this is a cylinder this is a solenoid now let us say this is attached this is the key and this is attached to some let's say battery to give the current now the current is flowing in this direction okay. but we have to draw the pattern of magnetic field lines in this case so pattern of magnetic field lines will form closed loops they will emerge from one end say let's say these are emerging from this end so this will be the north pole and they are merging at this end so this is the south pole so we will just draw only two magnetic field lines so these are the pattern of the magnetic field line similarly here the magnetic field line okay yeah, this would be another one okay so the field lines are parallel magnetic field lines are parallel inside the solenoid so just make sure that they are parallel this is just a rough sketch so make sure that you draw the parallel magnetic field lines so magnetic field lines are merging at this end and they are emerging from this end okay so this is a pattern of magnetic field lines this is our solenoid 
and these are the magnetic field lines and uh, and where from where the magnetic field lines emerge so here the magnetic field lines emerge so this is the north pole and where the magnetic field lines merge it becomes the south pole okay so this is the magnetic field lines of a current carrying solenoid so we can label it as make sure that inside the solenoid you draw the pattern line so this is the magnetic field lines magnetic field lines of a solenoid okay uh, now we have to draw the pattern of magnetic field lines around a bar magnet so let's say this is a bar magnet and this is the north pole this is the south pole and <coughs> So magnetic field lines will emerge from the north and will merge at the south. Emerge from south and will merge at this. Emerge from north and will merge at the south. North to south. Okay. So north to south. Let's give the directions. So these are coming at the south. Okay. So this is. Let me draw our goal. Okay. This is a pattern of magnetic field lines of a power magnet. So we can say that these are the okay. Now let's move on to the next part. What's so list two distinguishing features between the two fields. So let's me write down the two features, distinguishing features between the two fields. So this one is the magnetic field of a solenoid. And next is the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Okay, we have to list two differences now. So in this case, the magnetic field is produced by giving the current in this solenoid. So that means we can increase the magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field can be changed by changing the current. So here we can say this is the difference is that here the strength of magnetic field that can be changed by changing the current okay next so this is the magnetic field of a solenoid and this is the magnetic here the strength of the magnetic field cannot be changed here the strength because it's a natural magnet and its strength cannot be changed. So strength of magnetic field of a bar magnet, this cannot be changed. So this is the first noticeable difference, it cannot be changed. Now what is the second difference? The second difference is we can also reverse the direction of magnetic field by changing the direction of the so direction of magnetic field can be reversed by changing the direction of magnetic field this can be reversed by changing the direction of current so we can say that this is an artificial magnet so here we can change the strength we can change the direction this is a natural magnet natural bar magnet where we cannot change the direction of magnetic field, the direction the direction of magnetic field for a bar magnet cannot be changed. Okay. 
So here the direction cannot be changed. Okay. If you want to now write down the third difference, we can also write it down. This X is a bar magnet as long as the current is flowing through it. So it is a temporary magnet. So we can say that it's a temporary magnet. And this is, it is a permanent magnet. And the magnet this is a magnet when current is flowing through this, so we can also call it an electromagnet. So it bar magnet is a permanent magnet while the solenoid is a temporary magnet. So these are the three noticeable differences. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> 